this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, I'm covering example 2 from section 1-4 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. Uh, today's example is how to use literal equations to solve problems. So it says, in a half hour, Sarah is meeting her friends at the lake, which is six miles from her house. At what average speed must she ride to get her bike there on time? All right, now there is a distance formula. Um, it says that the distance equals whatever rate of travel you're going at times time. And so your book, what they want you to do is they want you to solve to get an equation that describes just the rate. So we're going to isolate the letter R there. And then what we're going to do is plug in the variables that we know in order to figure out what that rate would be. All right, so if I look right now, the R is being multiplied by T. And so the inverse operation that would move T across this equal sign would be to divide. So on both sides of my equal side, I'm dividing by the letter T. Remember, if you don't do it to both sides, uh, you'll have an imbalanced equation. So what ends up happening is you just get a fraction that says distance over time is equal to r. Now, in this situation, in this equation, honestly, I probably wouldn't have done that. Uh, the only time I ever tend to solve for a variable before I plug in numbers for it is if the numbers that I get out of it are icky. So for example, if they're very large or if they're very small, or if they're a repeated decimal. That's what solving for a letter here kind of helps to negate when you're in a calculator. Because when you have your calculator, um, a lot of the older calculators don't allow you to just type in the whole equation as you see it. Although solving for the variable makes it to where that's possible with the newer calculators as well. So that's why they're trying to get you in this habit. All right, so we have our rate equals our distance over our time. So I need to figure out what those are. So the distance here says six miles, so that's my D value. And over time, all right, the time is a half hour. Now usually, if we're talking about a speed, Speed is usually measured in miles per hour. So I have the six oops, in miles. I need to make sure that down here my time is in hours. So this is a half hour, so I could put one half or I could put 0.5, uh, whatever floats your boat. But you don't want to put 30 minutes. If you put 30 minutes, it's going to say miles per minute. And that's not really a speed that we measure in very often. All right, so then I'm going to take out my handy dandy calculator, which of course is on a separate screen. And I do 6 divided by 0.5, and I get 12. So she needs to travel 12 miles per hour on her bike. Now this is a word problem, so I'm going to answer it with a word answer, which is a really good habit to get into. She needs to ride 12 miles per hour to make it on time. There it is. I mean, we all know that in real life, she might want to travel a little faster than that. You know, I mean, what if she has to wait for a car to pass at an intersection or... She drops her water bottle, something like that, right? So in application, this is the minimum that she needs to ride without any type of interruption. All right, so then if I look at the try it, it says Sarah is going to a store that's two and a half miles away, and she only has 15 minutes to get there before she close, or before they close. What speed does she have to ride to get to the store before they close? All right, so we're going to use that same formula that we calculated earlier. The, the rate equals the distance over time. So the distance of 2.5 miles, that's in miles that you need. 
and we want it in miles per hour, right? So we have to think about 15 minutes. So here's a clock. Might be the best clock I've ever drawn. All right, so 15 minutes looks like this. And so 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. It's one fourth of the clock time. So that's why I'm putting 0.25 or I could put a one fourth down there. Although since I already had a decimal, I didn't want a fraction and a decimal mixed because ew. All right, so then you just take your calculator. Oops. You mess up typing in your calculator. <laughs> uh, but 2.5 divided by 25 is 10. So she would need to pedal to the metal at 10 miles per hour to make it on time before they close. That being said, she's not really giving her time herself time to shop, is she? All right, now this section does also include a habits of mind. It says, how is solving equations with numbers the same as solving equations with only variables? All right, so they're trying to get you to think about how things are similar. And, and to generate like relationships. I mean, the answer to this is you still use inverse operations, right? Uh, so we'll just pop that into our habits of mind there to think about. Uh, but there we have it, guys. That is uh, using literal equations to solve problems. Until next time.